by Jesus. I bow before you. I reference you because there is no one else like you. The one that founded the earth upon a foundation that cannot be moved. The one that spoke, it was done. He commanded, he stood fast. In him I live, in him I move. In him I have my being. Father Lord, I want to thank you for another opportunity to be a blessing, to be a vessel. Father Lord Jehovah, we have come hungry and thirsty to hear your word. Father Lord Jehovah, let your word bring inspiration. Let your word give us insight. Let it give us wisdom. Let it comfort us. Let your word encourage us. And most especially, give us the grace to practice your word, to put your word into practice. Let the heaven be open. I hide myself behind the cross. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. But I believe your word has said, when you go to the synagogue, don't be afraid of what to say. That when I open my mouth, you will fill it up. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. What you want to do here today, Father, have your way. For the stage is set. Show yourself mighty. For in Jesus' name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Be seated. Our Bible passage is taken from Isaiah chapter 60, from verse 1 to 3. The title of this message today is, It is my season to arise and shine. Tell your neighbor, it is my season to arise and shine. It is my season to arise and shine. Our text is taken from Isaiah chapter 60, from verse 1 to 3. I read, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to their light, and the kings to the brightness of of the arising. Praise Master Jesus. You are all welcome to today's service. And I promise you something, that today's service is going to be a service you will live to remember. Because the power of God will move. The awesomeness of God will be seen. Because I'm going to kind of rush the message. Because there is something the Lord wants to do here. And it has to do with contact with the altar and every one of us. For those who want to activate something in their lives. Praise Master Jesus. When I was given this topic, I was, given, I was not given the topic, rather. I was told that I was going to be taking the message for today. And I went home and I began to ask God, Father, what do you have for us on Sunday? Praise Master Jesus. I don't believe in going to the internet to be searching for salmon. That someone could be for a season for someone else somewhere. Praise the Lord. 
And I woke up in the morning, I was pondering, Lord, it is a season of a new wave. Praise the Lord. To the glory of God, I was opportune to be at the camp. To the glory of God, I was there for six days. From Monday to Saturday, I came back on Sunday. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said, there is something I want to do. There is something I want to activate. Praise Master Jesus. And I pray that when that section comes, you will allow the Spirit of God find expression in your heart. Praise Master Jesus. Now, and I was now wondering, that, Father, why, has, why should it be it is a season to arise and shine? He said, you have forgotten that you are in a season. In the redeemed Christian church of God, you are in a season of new wave of glory. And the Lord told me that the evidence that the glory of God has enveloped a man is the ability of that man to shine. Praise the Lord. So in other words, there is no shining without the light of God. There is no light without the glory of God. The light of God is the glory of God. And that day at the camp made us to understand. He said that the glory of God comes in waves. Praise the Lord. And it depends on the level you want to operate on. You want to operate on the valley or you want to operate on the topmost part of the wave. It all depends on you. Now, what is a season? Praise the Lord. A season, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, said, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. So a season is a time. A season is a period. A season is like a new dawn. Praise the Lord. A season is like a period of time for an event or an occurrence. Praise Master Jesus. I don't know about you, but it is my season of arising from nothing to shine in something. It is my season for arising from sickness to shine in divine health. It is my season, I don't know about you, for arising in struggle to shine in victory. Praise Master Jesus. Now, what is the meaning of arise? Arise means to come up, to spring up, to move up, to move to a higher level, to come out of darkness into light, to be awoken, to invoke and to emerge. Today, God wants us to emerge. Many of us have been sitting in darkness for too long. Praise the Lord. Many of us have been oppressed by the forces of darkness. But I have come with a message from the Lord that today, every oppression, every challenge, every struggle in your life, by the power in the name of Jesus, those problems will bow and they will be destroyed. Praise the Lord. You know, the beauty of light is that when light comes, it compels darkness to bow. There is no struggle. Praise the Lord. When light comes, darkness will not say, I am not ready to go. The day light comes into your life, praise the Lord, darkness automatically expires. The era of darkness, the era of sickness, the era of struggle and poverty is automatically what? Terminated. But how many people are carrying the light? Praise the Lord. Now, what does it mean to shine? Praise the Lord. We are talking about wave of glory. What does it mean to shine? In the book of John chapter 8 verse 12. John 8, 12. The Bible made us to understand. It said, then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of of life. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. Isaiah 9 2. We are talking about what does it mean to shine. Remember our topic is talking about I will arise and shine. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2 says the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in dark land, the light will shine on them. John chapter 1 verse 5. John 1 5. See, talking about what does it mean to shine. He said, the light shine in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. What does it mean to shine, brother? What does it mean to shine, sister? What does it mean to shine, mommy? Praise the Lord. From where we read, in John 8, 12, the Bible said, Jesus said, I am the light. If you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. So, when we talk about light, we talk about shining. Shining has to do with the brightness. The brightness that comes forth as a result of the light that is reflecting in you. 
Many people will say, I'm a born again Christian. Born again by lips, but not born again by character. Praise the Lord. What does it mean to shine? To shine means when you are able to reflect the beauty of God. When you are able to exhibit the attributes of God. When your life is able to transmit and radiate godliness. When you are able to show love in the midst of hatred. Remember, we are in the world. The world is full of darkness. The world is full of hatred. In that your office, brother, are you shining? Praise the Lord. When people will come together and they say, let's lie because we need to steal money. My husband was working with Coca-Cola some years ago. And the boss said he wanted to buy a house in one of the rich estates. But he doesn't have the money. He said he wants to arrange it. Praise the Lord. That he wants to arrange 10 million. What do they have to do? Get a contractor. Tell the contractor to sign that you supplied us something. But nothing was supplied. The company paid 10 million and they shared the money. Praise the Lord. Now if you are a child of God and you partake of that, you are being darkness. You are not a light. But when they are saying, we want to do this deal, you said, this is cheating the company. And what goes around, comes around. Tomorrow you open Cyber Cafe. Tomorrow you open Baby Saloon. Tomorrow you open your own company. Wait, the law of karma will come. You cheated Coca-Cola. One day somebody else will cheat you. And the law of karma is so powerful. The Bible says that it's not the seed you sow. The seed will produce harvest. So what you will reap will be more than what you did. Are you a light in your neighborhood? Praise the Lord. I remember the story. Somebody was telling me. A guest minister was coming to minister. And they we are talking about, are you shining? Are you a light? The light is Christ. It's your attitude that reflects whether what you are carrying is God or you are carrying the devil. On the way to the church for administration, one of the church members, you know, was rushing to church. And this pastor driving, somebody hit him. The pastor was the guest minister. And he did not know that brother because he did not know their church. And he came down with anger, slapped the man. Started kicking him. Are you crazy? What is wrong with you? People now say, I'm sorry, sir. Please, we are very sorry, sir. They were even begging. The guy was provoking. Leave me alone. I want to deal with him. By the time they got to church, that brother rushed in. Lo and behold, the guest minister mounted the pupil. The guy looked at him and said, no, I can't be under his ministration. This man is not broken. Out there, something happened. It was an opportunity to reflect light. But he reflected the nature of self. Praise the Lord. And I'm sure that man would have gone to tell the pastor or tell some other people, you don't know where, who is watching you. Your conduct indicates to us the state, your spiritual state. Praise the Lord. What does it mean to shine? As a wife, are you shining in the house? You think shining is just come to church, do Bible study, do faith clinic and go. Praise the Lord. I was, while I was preparing for this topic, the Lord took my mind. He kept taking my mind. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. First Peter 3, 1. Praise the Lord. Apostle Peter was saying something there. He said, women, submit yourself to the authority of your husband. Even if that husband is not a born again Christian. If your preaching cannot win him, let your godly life win him. Sister, if you disrespect your husband at home, my dear, you are not shining. Praise the Lord. Whether you like it or not, your husband is your crown. And God is the head of the man. There cannot be two captains in the ship. If you let me, professor, your husband, even though he's a drunkard, or gun ahead. Praise the Lord. Your husband, not to drop money for feeding. I'm sorry. He's not doing his part. But you as the wife must respect your husband. If not, pray and pray. And you'll be wondering, which is from my village? They are hindering my prayer. My dear, it is in the place of submission. Your light is not shining at home. And you know one thing about when a woman's light is not shining at home? The environment is no longer conducive to bring up godly children. You want to serve your husband food. You don't serve him with respect. You can't greet him. 
There is somebody at this message because the Lord kept hammering it. You must talk this one. He will talk, he will hiss. I'm sorry for you. You will hinder your heaven. Go to camp, go to mighty, jump everywhere. If that one from home is not settled, hey, you are in trouble. What about the man? Oga, are you shining as a husband? Or your own minister for church? You are, you are a guest minister all over the world. But when you come to the house, you neglect your responsibilities. It means you are not shining. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. What does it mean to shine? Ability to exercise self-control in the face of provocation. A man at my plaza, I wasn't there, but I was told the story. And I rejoiced with the brother. He just drove in. And this, and mistakenly hits down somebody's uh, makeup box. He did not break the items. By the time he could get out from the car to say, oh, auntie, sorry, the lady lashed him hot slap. Before he could talk, he lashed out somebody's husband. Praise the Lord. It's not her fault. It is what she carried inside. She's reflecting it. And the man, thank God, is a born again Christian. He told her, I'm very sorry, ma. I didn't know the box was there. How much is the whole thing? He said, you broke everything. He said, I'm very sorry. Praise the Lord. Ah, that's a child of God. My dear, meekness is not weakness. When you are weak, oh boy, you don't get power. But somebody that is meek, he they look you, he they pity you. Praise the Lord. The woman said such amount. 5,000, I can't remember. The guy counted the money. Gave her, sorry ma, and drove away. That's a child of God. People were shouting. Ah, even at me. Ah, all these bad boys. Ah, we slap her. Praise the Lord. Jesus. When Jesus is in you, you display meekness. Praise the Lord. I still remember a story. It was my husband that sent it on WhatsApp. Still kind of taking me back to women. This man was boasting about his wife to his friends. He said, my wife is so tolerant. She's a born again Christian. I will get home drunk. She will clean me up. She does not even complain every time she's praying for me. He said, she's pretending, John. All these so-called born again women. I beg. Praise the Lord. The friend said, let's put her to a test. If she pass, I will give my life to Christ. This woman did not know. She was at home praying. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit will tell her, my daughter, today put extra shock as over. Grace. I'm putting increasing grace. No matter what you see, don't shout. Don't be angry. Shining. It will cost you. It is painful. But heaven will rejoice. This man came in. Drunk. Scattering everywhere. Ah, honey, welcome, sir. Ah, you came with your friends. Yes, yeah, stupid woman. Say, sorry, sir. Say, I want to eat. This one said, this is what I want to eat. She went to bring the food. She brought it. They ate it. They threw it away. Too much pepper. Too much sauce. Sorry, sir. She cleaned it up. Which one? She will go and bring. They will throw away. She will go and bring. At a point, one of them held her hand. He said, I want to serve the God that you are serving. The God that made you this tolerance. You were attended to us like a mother will attend to a foolish child. Yet not complaining. Loving. Gentle and meek. He was crying. Holding her hand. I want to serve the God. That woman was a light. And the essence of light is to shine in darkness. If you are a light and you cannot shine in darkness, your light is of no use. I will arise and shine. Means I will arise and make a difference. Everybody is doing it does not make it right. Praise Master Jesus. What does it mean to shine? When my life is pointing people to Christ, you are in the bus. And the Lord is saying, Preach the gospel. Witness. You said, I don't know how to speak grammar. I am not well dressed. Praise the Lord. For those of us that don't come for Bible studies, you are missing, no? On Tuesday, we treated activating the power of grace. Very loaded. Praise the Lord. You refuse to shine where you cannot open your mouth to evangelize for God. What of in that your compound? There was one Time some of our youth went for evangelism at uh, Fakile's side. And one of them came to tell me that, ah, if you see our encounter today, I said, what happened? 
So they went to meet one woman that was washing. They, she said, is it redeemed? He said, never. He said, my what happened to redeem? He said, there's a woman in this my compound. If I quarrel with her, this woman, attend, she goes to church very early. She attends all the programs. If I quarrel with her, I'll be greeting her. She'll be keeping my list with me. He said, I, even though I will give my life to Christ, not to redeem member. Not, I will not go to redeem church. Praise the Lord. That woman has caused heaven a soul. And judgment will be there. Praise the Lord. When your life, in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, Daniel 12, 3, talking about when my life is able to point men to Christ, he said, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of heaven, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. There was one encounter I had with someone I will never forget in my shop. I used to have a shop at Ojodu Beggar. This man just walked in, well-dressed, and the Holy Spirit said, talk to him. I said, was my own. I want to sell markets. The Lord said, speak to him. And as I was talking, he said, madam, forget. I'm a born again Christian. The only people said, don't mind him. Oh. He has backslidden. And I began to talk to him. You know, when you preach or minister to somebody or witness, where the Holy Spirit is by your back, telling you what to say. The man started crying in my shop. Tears in his eyes. He said, madam, let me tell you the truth. I've left my wife. I'm no longer with my family. I said, but sir, now that you left the wife, and then when you were with your wife, which one was better? I said, Mother, let me tell you the truth. The peace I was enjoying then, I don't have it now. So why can't you go back? He said, pride. How? Where do I start from? After everything, I said, ah, that is why God brought you here. For today, light has come. That pride that is a darkness is going to be broken in this shop. The day he came to meet me, some months later, I didn't recognize him. He said, Madam, I was the one that you evangelized to in your shop and I gave my life to cry, reconcile back to God. I want to bring my wife to see you. I had gross pimples. The feeling I have was more than one million naira that somebody will say, dash, take. That is what it means. To be relevant. When you are a soul winner, you are a delight to heaven. When you are a soul winner, you are a joy to heaven. Do you know why? For each soul you win, they will throw party. They will throw party. Praise the Lord. Ask yourself a question. What am I reflecting? Are you reflecting selfishness? Are you reflecting wickedness? What are you reflecting? Is a wake-up call for us? Praise the Lord. When we shine, we bear fruit. Praise the Lord. When you seek God and its righteousness. When I went to the camp, one more, and now I know, I know, I'll be praying. <laughs> See, old mama. Mama, they pray. Camp was packed full. I was sleeping inside my car. Sometimes I will bath, sometimes I will not bath. I say my flesh is be ready to suffer. Because there is no gain without pain. We went for prayer walks. I had an injury on my toe. The color is still there as an evidence. I said, this leg, pain me. But this prayer walk, you must do it. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us. To shine, we curse you. It will cost you swallowing rubbish. People will talk to you anyhow. And you say, thank you, ma. Because you need to shine. When Jesus came, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, he endured the shame, despite, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Many women who are born again Christian, we take a lot of rubbish from our husbands because we are heavenly focused. It's not that we are foolish. The world, we call it foolishness. But God calls you a wise and virtuous woman. Praise the Lord. When you bear spiritual fruit, you are shining. One of the spiritual fruit, he's talking about Galatians chapter 5, 22. If you get home, write down all these Bible passages. Read them. Praise the Lord. Is your light reflecting joy? In your house, is there joy and peace in your home? The light in you, the light in your husband, we make the family blossom and shine. When you are darkness, your wife is darkness, the house will be darkness. The children will be darkness. You cannot give what you don't have. The Lord will help us to begin to reflect light. Because there is a new wave. A new wave of glory that is moving. This new wave of glory has been unleashed. 
There's a wave of judgment. I pity those that will not give their life to Christ today. Because the Lord expressly said, is it that you go with the wave of glory or you go with the wave of judgment? And that wave of judgment will come with all manner of things. I was telling my children, I said, each time I remember all these notorious armed robbers, Yahoo, Yahoo boys, tough guys, them and any them, all those tough armed robbers who had juju, they told themselves, nothing can happen to me. Nobody can catch me. All of them, including Osama Bin Laden, hey, they were all caught and disgraced at the end of the day. It does not matter how long you are in darkness doing Yahoo business. I'm an evangelist and I'm a radical person. So me, I, know they, I don't know how to romance somebody's shoulders. Praise the Lord. I know how to say it as it is. You are here, you are doing Yahoo. You need to give your life to Christ. If that one in Dubai, I can't remember that one name. Hot puppy. Praise the Lord. With all his wisdom, with all his craftiness, my dear, they still catch her. Who told you your own time is not coming? The Bible says, God is not mock. Do not be deceived. For whatever a man sow, he will reap. You that married man, you are cheating on your wife. One day now, one day. Every day for the thief. One day for the owner of the house. Praise Master Jesus. Look at that handsome man that was almost clocking 50. Cheating man, smally, 23 years old. 20, 21, thank you my dear. I was telling my husband, I said, on the day of the man's funeral, what will be the testimony? What will the mother tell the children? Mommy, what kid daddy? Was he accident? He said, daddy, side cheek. Hey! My God. My Sata. Hey! It is where? But God is telling us, tell yourself, in the midst of darkness, I will arise and shine. I will make the difference. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to quickly look at, before we go into to prayers, what can hinder my shine? Remember, I said, your ability to shine in the midst of darkness. Because what you are shining out, it does not belong to you. Remember that Jesus said that he is the light of the world. Whoever follows him, praise the Lord. He said in him was life. That life was light. So it means what you reflect is what you carry. Now, what can hinder you from reflecting Christ? Number one is sin. In Romans chapter 6, 1 to 2. Romans 6, 1 to 2. That, that place, Apostle Paul, he said, what shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace might abound? God forbid. Praise the Lord. And during our Bible studies on Tuesday, we talked about sin. Whenever you do anything outside the will of God, that is sin. Praise the Lord. I was given, an, uh, I was telling them, was it the Tuesday or the one of last month, that when I gave my life to Christ, I was on fire. I was hungry. Praise the Lord. Hungry for the Lord. And I was in the shop, carried away, talking with some women. I said, me, I like jewelry, so, yeah. I grew up in the north. I know the quality of jewelry. Dubai and all manner of gold. I have them. I love it. I said, me, I cannot give it up for anything, no, except God himself visit me. Even as a child of God, me, I will display my jewelry. Ah, I didn't know that God heard me. I went to sleep in the night. And I had a visitation. He said, I heard you blabbing your mouth. You love jewelry. You, nothing will stop you. So, but me, I've come to visit. And I am the king of kings and the lord of lords. Oh, that's my wear. But because of your love for it, you will not wear it again. I said, eh? Praise the Lord. That was the end. You wear your earring, nothing they happen. Make I wear my own. Simple instruction neglected. Sin. Praise the Lord. Jesus was telling the disciples, telling the Pharisees, that Shabi, you people say, if you trust, if, if somebody commit adultery, throw stone at her, throw stone at him. He said, but I tell you when you lost, that is why it's more difficult now. You see what girls are wearing. Even me, where the woman go, they look. They go, put some kind of things for their kidney, put granite oil for their cleavages, packaging. The man will be lost. You cannot say they should arrest all the girls that are wearing nicker. So that means more work for your mind. 
and the mind is very, very sensitive and subtle. When it snaps a picture of something, when you want to lie down, it will bring in the picture to your mind. And if you don't deal with it, it will defile you. Remember, Matthew chapter 15, Jesus said something. He said, it is not what you eat. It is what comes out of you that defiles you because it's coming out of your mind. How can something enter your mind? It is from your eyes. Praise the Lord. Adam was given a simple instruction. Praise the Lord. Don't eat from this fruit. He neglected it. And what happened? The essence of God, the beauty of God, the power and the glory of God left him. If you are here today, God has been telling your heart to do one particular thing. You know that it's God. That my dear, this trousers that you wear and you are very endowed and you wear tight and wear small uh, top and you are making men to lost and you are a child of God. Please, can you stop? Mama Adeboye told, I remember one of the stories. He said, anytime she's going to walk, cars will be stopping. She go to her, her office. She knelt down. She was praying. Now go tell her and say, you carry the thing. The thing they wear, they do the uh, show her. She had to change the dressing and car stopped. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise Master Jesus. My dear, and that's why Jesus Christ said, if the hand will lead you to hell, cut it off. That be a parlor. If it will lead you to hell, or God not go there again. What again can hinder my light? Do you know that before your light is put off completely, it will start getting dull. It does not off immediately. Oh. It's a process. Just like the glory of God is precept upon precept. It will start with your prayer life. Praise the Lord. Fear is number two that can hinder your light. And what is fear? Fear is a torment. The Bible in Romans chapter 8 Verse 15, Romans 8, 15. He said, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the new spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. Do you know what fear does? Go and read the account of David. In 1 Samuel chapter 17. The children of Israelites, they saw Goliath, they saw undefeated champion. Many of us reduce the size of God because of your challenges. You don't trust God. It's fear. Fear will make you make, take the wrong decision instead of waiting upon God, instead of trusting God. Praise the Lord. Another thing that can hinder your light from shining is prayerlessness. Prayerlessness, especially this period where I go. Praise the Lord. What does it mean to pray? Communication with God. I'm very sure there are some people here, if I'm not mistaken. They will stay like a whole week to pray. Even when they are praying, they know that the prayer is not getting anywhere. Because as they are praying, they are thinking of their goosey soup. They are thinking of the dress. They are thinking of, ah, that customer has not called me. Where will I get that rewire? That's now used for that generator. Hey, this customer, you are praying in the presence of God. Yet you are distracted. A man of God that gave us a seminar, one Reverend Moses at the camp, he said, when you are praying and your phone rings and you answer, that is disrespect to God. He said, go to a boss office or go and meet a governor. And the governor is talking to you. You are talking to somebody on the phone. Hey, is it the generator man? Let the man will send you out of his office. Praise Master Jesus. When you cannot pray, your light becomes dull. And as time goes on, the, the thing does not, stop, does not stop automatically. If you are praying for one hour, you start praying 30 minutes. From 30 minutes, you start praying for 10 minutes. From 10 minutes, you just say, Lord, I thank you for today. Thank you, Jesus. You go and sleep. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Praise the Lord. God will not answer what you did not pray for. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And quickly, finally, the thing that cannot, that we hinder our shining, lack of study of the word of God. The Bible in Psalm 119, verse 103, said the entrance of the word brings light. So how can the light come when you don't spend time with the word of God? It is when you study the word, you experience what they call rema. Don't study the word because you have to come and take open heaven. Don't study the word because you have to come and take 
Bible study. Don't study the word because you have to come and preach on the altar. Have a personal study. Praise the Lord. Because it's in the word of God that you will know the will of God. It is in the word of God that you know the mind of God. There is no way your light will shine when you don't study. It's not just studying alone. Meditate on it. Chew the word. Let the word enter your DNA. The Lord will help us. That is why I'm encouraging as many that have not been coming for Bible study. I remember our late pastor, Pastor uh, Adejori. May God bless his soul. He made me to fall in love with Bible study. My shop was very far. All the way from Ojodu Bega coming here. He said, Madam, there is no problem. Look for a redeemed church beside your market. If you calculate the time, that by the time you get here, but you must not miss Bible study. There was a redeemed church close to our market. I will, will market will close by five. I will go and wait, attend it, and then come home. Don't say because church is far from you. The Bible says, do not forsake the garden of the brethren. Even though the only hour where they talk for Bible study, you feel whole. It's better than nothing. You are a child of God. You are not carrying the word. Jesus Christ gave us an example. In Matthew chapter 4, he was able to defeat the devil by saying, it is written. Why will you say? If the devil come after you, what verse will you tell him? Light. It is because most of us don't study the word. That is why all these false prophets will come and tell you rubbish. One came to my shop one time. She had the gift of prophecy. She was prophesying for people. All the things she was saying were right. And I was kabaching inside me. Praise the Lord. And the Lord told me she's bad story. She's not real. And when I went to sleep, I said, he said, why don't you ask me to show you? When you are a child of God, you are not taken on our I said, Father, show me a real identity. And our identity was shown that she's a python. Imagine I did not know. Imagine I don't carry light. It is light that is, when you carry light, it is now reflecting. It will now be telling you that this one is not of God. Now what do I do? To provoke my shining. Give your life to Christ. You are here today. And you have been living the wrong way. You are here today. You know that your life is not shining. You are here today. You know that if the trumpet should sound, you will not be able to make it. I remember the story of a man of God. He made a taco. And some people came. I was praying with them one after the other. He got to this sister. Sister said, what, what would I tell Paul? He said, sorry, sister, who is Paul? He said, Paul is my boyfriend. What would I tell Paul if I give my life to Christ? He said, forget about Paul. God is more important. I said, no, let me think about it. As she was walking, she was distracted. That was how a vehicle knocked her down. She died on the spot. The pastor was crying like a baby. He said, you will not understand. She has gone to hell. She refused to give her life to Christ because of Paul. Paul will move ahead. Even your husband, if you die today, men, they remarry faster than women. No, it's true. Check our founding fathers. Them Kumi, them, I don't want to mention names. Women will stay. But it is not a sin, no, for them to remarry. One woman don't go, a chapter don't over. But this is a season. All eyes closed. I'm going to be calling two sets of people. The Lord asked me to replicate what happened at the camp. And when mommy, this is our AP, was praying yesterday, she mentioned something like, I said, that's a confirmation. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to do something this morning. If you are here, you don't need to be afraid. Fear makes people lose salvation. Make you hinder your light. It is a season for you to shine. For you to shine, you need to bring light in. If you want to give your life to Christ, why don't you signify by raising up your hand? The presence of God is here. Because when we call the second section of people, please, if you know that you are not born again, don't come out. Don't join us. So that you will not attract the judgment of God. You are doing a legitimate business. You are living a wrong life. Yet, you don't want to surrender to Jesus. If you are here, please, can you signify by raising your hand? Jesus is waiting for you today. He's waiting for you. And the second set, 
The Lord told me something. This was a handkerchief. Praise the Lord. We can raise our faces up. This handkerchief was a handkerchief I used at the camp. Daddy asked us to wave it and told us that the altar is open. The Lord told me that he wants to do something in our lives today. And I've been praying for myself. He said he wants to activate that wave of glory in our of prayer. But we must make sure we make contact with the altar. Whether you're a minister, whether you're a worker. If you're not interested, please sit on your chair. Don't look at me. It is not me. Praise the Lord. I almost made this mistake the day I went, I, I went for administration. And the Lord told me that there's somebody there that had my grain. It, was that day, it wasn't that day I was told. I was driving, worshipping God in my car. And the Lord told me that administration that you are going to have, there is a woman having my grain. Make sure you mention it. I was afraid. I said, maybe it's my mind. By the time I got to the administration, the Lord said, mention it. I said, Shebi is not my mind. By the time I mentioned it, somebody was shouting, hallelujah, hallelujah. After the service, she said, ma, I've been having serious migraine. Ever since, when God gives me instruction, I make sure I do it. Let's be on our feet. I sorry. If you have your handkerchief, bring it out. We are coming to the altar. You must make sure you make contact with the altar. And by the time I'm waving, when choir will be taking that song, sub to me, please. God wants to do something. I want us to release our spirits. Don't look at me that you know Sister Goodness before. It is not me that is standing here. I'm just a vessel. God is just finding expression through me. Praise Master Jesus. Don't look at me because you are familiar with me. Open your spirit, man. God wants to remove some things in the life of some people. The wave is moving. You will come to the altar. Subtly. And as I'm waving this handkerchief that I waved at the camp, if you have your handkerchief, you wear. If you don't have your handkerchief, your prayer will be, Father, let the new wave of glory invoke my life. Today, God wants to invoke. He wants to invade your life. As the choir will be taking that song subtly, please, if, it's the, if the choir stands side that you can touch, that is a part of the altar, make sure you make a contact with the altar. If you are not in stress, please just stay on your seat. Praise the Lord. But make sure you come to the altar. Choir, I surrender to you subtly and I'll begin to wave this. Please, let's come to the altar. As we wave it, begin to talk to the Almighty God. The altar is open. Let's come. God is, God is available. Come with all your heart. The Lord is waiting for you. The altar is waiting for you. Make sure you are not ashamed. Your neighbor is not moving. does not concern you. Make sure you come to the altar and make sure you are waving your handkerchief. If you don't have the handkerchief to wave, make sure you are talking to the Almighty God. It does not matter whether you are a minister. It does not matter whether you are a worker. God wants to invoke something new. God wants to invoke something new. Tell him, Father Lord, let your glory invoke. Touch the altar. Kneel at the altar. Make sure you are kneeling at the altar. Talk to the Lord. Father, let's see your new wave of glory. So the rest of you, you don't want the glory of God. Jesus, 
Let a new wave of glory invade my life, invade my husband, invade my children. Call upon the Almighty God. Hey, the wave is moving. 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 to you. While I was praying in my closet, you gave me an instruction that you want to activate the glory. Father, you say we must make contact with the altar. And I'm leaning on this altar, Lord. Father, Lord, thank you for the new wave of glory that has been released. To go out there to shine in the midst of darkness. Father, you know your children more than I do. They came out here in obedience to your instruction. Father Lord, next Sunday, before next Sunday, there will be a testimony. Before next Sunday, Lord, people that know them before will not recognize them again. Let that new wave of glory be evident in their lives. Be evident in my own life, in my home. In the name of Jesus. Thank you because our case is settled. For in Jesus' name, we are praying. Go back and begin to celebrate. Begin to appreciate it. Reference it for your case is settled. Thank you, Jesus. 